and we're back. Today we're talking about other storage services in AWS. You might be thinking, Amber, I just watched a video on S3, which if you haven't, we have an entire video just on explaining S3 and the different types of storage tiers that they have and classes and all of that good stuff. But there's more. That's just one service for AWS and of a whole bunch of different storage services. So today we're looking at some of the other ones. We're also going to do a very brief recap on S3 just to get your mind going. But it's going to be a big one. So again, notes are good. Would highly recommend. Let's get started. Different AWS storage services. Here we go. This is what we're covering today. It's, it's a big one. You can see here that we're doing a lot of different stuff. I mean, we have, oh, other way. We have S3, EBS, EC2, EFS, FSX, Storage Gateway, DRS, and AWS Backup. I mean, this is no joke. We're going to go through all of these. We're just going to do a brief high-level overview. If you can remember what all of these stand for by the end of it, you'll be doing very, very well. So that is my challenge to you. If you come back to this at the end of the video, can you pause this particular frame? And then can you list off what each of these mean? If you can do that at the end of the video, you're on track. So let's get into it, starting with S3, the classic, the favorite, simple storage services. So simple storage services is like the big data warehouse. There's different classes within S3 that will depend on how frequently you want to access that data. But on the whole, this is the most common one. It's just somewhere where you can store pretty much any type of data and you can access it from anywhere in the world at any different time. But you want to make sure you choose the right class depending on how frequently you access it. So like the Glacier classes are more for the backups, whereas the instant retrieval classes are more for the day-to-day, -day, everyday use. We've already done a whole video on that one. So if you want more information on that, check it out. Otherwise, we're going to move swiftly onwards to EBS, which is the Elastic Block Store. Now, EBS provides storage for different EC2 instances. An EC2 instance is just a virtual server, which we're going to get to in more detail later on. But for now, all you need to know is that EBS helps to provide storage to support these virtual servers. The data in your EBS volumes remains active and available, even if the EC2 instance is stopped. Backups of your EBS can be taken through EBS snapshots, which is a key word there. And all this means is that you've got a backup of your EBS data just in case something goes wrong, if it ever would, and you've always got that backup there. Next, we have the EC2 instance store. The EC2 instance store is about temporary data storage for your EC2 instances. The data stored in these stores is ephemeral, which means that if the instance stops, if your EC2 instance stops, then that data is going to be lost. This is a key difference between this type of storage and our elastic block store that we were talking about before. They both serve EC2 instances, but in this case, if an EC2 instance stops, then that data is lost. So this is great for information that changes frequently, things like buffers, caches, and scratch data. Buffer spaces is short-term storage spaces for data when it's traveling from one place to another. So an example would be a loading screen during a video streaming. The loading screen would be a great example of something that is stored in a buffer. Then we have caches, which is your quick access memory. This is where we're storing things that are frequently used that can help to speed up a process. So for example, when you visit a website, your browser is actually storing caches from that website. Things like images, videos, frequently used files onto your actual hard drive, which means that next time you visit that website, it's going to be able to load the whole thing faster. And finally, scratch data is data that you are using right now, but that you're not going to need later on. So an example is if you copy something on your keyboard, copy and paste. When you copy that, you are copying that data for a short period of time, but then you don't need it anymore. So what actually happens? How the heck does your computer know when you copy something to keep that data but then once you pasted it, that you don't need it anymore. It's actually using services like the EC2 instance store in order to make that happen. Then we have the Elastic File System. This is great because it focuses on sharing. Whereas Amazon EBS or EC2 instance storage is great for supporting EC2 instances, 
and S3 is great for your backup and your storage. They are both more for things that aren't really going to change or be shared as often. The Amazon Elastic File System fills a completely different need. This is where users can access files that are stored here and edit them in parallel in real time. It's great for apps that need a common space to host files and is often used with EC2 instances. Elastic file system is automatically scalable, so your application won't have any problems if your data suddenly wildly increases. Your storage will scale accordingly. On the flip side, if your data decreases, then it's going to decrease your storage so you will pay less as well. Next, we have Amazon FSx. Great for processing big volumes of media and for machine learning. There are two main kind of flavors of FSx. The first one is for a Windows file server for any Microsoft Windows applications. And the second one is for Lustry, which is a powerful computer filing system that is designed to manage and process very large amounts of data quickly. Now, whereas the Elastic File Service is more for a wider range of things. It's definitely more popular. If you want something that's very specifically for Windows or for Lustre, then you want to be using this one instead, FSX. Number six is Storage Gateway. Storage Gateway is a great compromise between having your own local on-site servers and databases and then accessing them through the cloud. It means that you can keep the accessibility and the benefits of having local storage while still having the flexibility and the access of storage in the cloud. So if you are a company, for example, that still is using a lot of on-site local storage, then this is a great compromise. It means you don't have to go fully to the cloud, but it's still like an in-between. Then we have Elastic Data Recovery, which is basically like having step-by-step -step photos of all of your progress as you go. It helps you to look at your applications or your databases as you're building them. And it's taking kind of photos like screenshots in time of each part of your application so that if something goes wrong then you can look back and see all the different stages there's a special mention here as well to aws backup which is exactly as it sounds kind of like your time machine for going back and seeing your digital information that was all stored in aws at a time prior it helps to back up everything that we've talked about today from Amazon S3 to Elastic Block Store. All of these can be accidentally deleted. They might end up corrupted or you might have all sorts of different data loss scenarios. So having a place where you can back up all of that is really important. And AWS backup is like the backup for the backup. Thank you so much for learning a bit about the different storage services with AWS with me. And we'll see you in the next video.